Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Now, in a game of Commander, it's of course your goal to have fun, but it's also your goal to win. I mean, unless you're playing a Divine Intervention deck in which it's your goal to tie for whatever reason. I'm not going to ask questions. It's just that's that's your goal. But sometimes it's fun to have another kind of goal, like a Commander achievement to unlock. You set out to do something weird or wacky or complex or hard to pull off, and you do it. Now, quite a while back, I actually had an episode on other achievements that you can unlock in Commander, like taking out every player with Door to Nothingness. So if you haven't seen that episode, make sure you check it out, but, but watch this one first. Now, before we get into the card that this episode revolves around, a quick spoiler warning. This achievement came about because of a newly spoiled card from Kalheim. So if you don't want to see a spoiler from Kalheim, make sure you go check out that other achievement episode instead. But with all that said, let's jump into it. So this achievement came about thanks to the card Replicating Ring. It's a snow artifact for three that can tap for one mana of any color, so essentially a mana lift, but it's got more. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a night counter on replicating ring, then if it has eight or more night counters on it, remove all of them and create eight colorless snow artifact tokens named replicated ring with tap add one mana of any color. So this replicating ring replicates. Makes sense, right? Now, obviously this kind of replication can happen on its own. If you put the card down and it stays there for eight turns, you're gonna get it. Now, yes, it might be challenging to stay alive for those eight turns or to make sure that this stays in play for eight turns, but still, it's very doable. Not much of a challenge. What is a challenge, though, is seeing just how quickly you can get this thing to replicate and then just how many of those tokens you can make. There are plenty of ways in Magic that we can speed up the number of counters that are getting on this, and we'll discuss those here in a bit. One thing I do want to note, though, is how those night counters work. Your replicating rain gets those night counters, then when you get eight of them, they go away. When you get those tokens, the ring doesn't go away, but the counters do. So you can start building up your counters again. And keep in mind that the tokens that this creates are not copies of Replicating Ring. They even have a slightly different name with Replicated Ring. They're essentially mana -less and they don't get those night counters on them. That being said, getting eight mana -less in play is not bad. It may not be game ending, but I'm sure there are plenty of ways that you can think of to end the game from there. Now, before we go into some different ways to speed this up and get more counters on this card, I just want to make a quick note that there's another potential achievement to unlock in Kaldheim with the World Tree. So if you haven't seen that episode, make sure you check that episode on the game ending land, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of players out there building a deck around this land that really want to activate it. Anyways, lots of cool things are happening in Kaldheim, so let's talk about some cards that can help with Replicating Ring. And the first way to get more counters that came to mind for me is proliferating. And recently, we've actually gotten a decent amount of proliferate cards. So, for example, let's take a look at a simple proliferate spell with Contentious Plan. It's going to let us proliferate and draw a card. So, when we proliferate, we choose any number of permanents and or players, then we give each another counter of each kind already there. So, in order for this to work, we obviously need at least one knight counter on Replicating Ring, but after that, we can proliferate to our heart's content. Now, this is just a one-off effect, which can help, but repeatable effects can be even more effective. Throwing Bird is a 1-1 with flying, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we proliferate. So, usually flying is enough evasion to get through, so this can be a consistent, repeatable, every single turn we proliferate. So, basically, it can double up the speed that we get our knight counters. But a card that can be even faster than this is something like Evolution Sage. It has, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. So, our land drop's gonna help on top of our ramp, and any fetch lands that we have as well. In a Lance Matter or Landfall deck, we can proliferate an absurd amount of times with this. And then there's Flux Channeler, which can help us out in a different way. It says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. So if we've got a Spellslinger deck with a lot of low-to-the-ground cantrips, we can proliferate at an absurd rate with this. Or how about an Extra Bolt Tide, which takes this a step further, which says whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. So whether we're casting a creature or a non-creature spell, it doesn't matter, we get to proliferate. Outside of proliferating, though, there's other ways for us to speed up our clock on Replicating Ring. And the next one that I want to talk about is working with that upkeep trigger. A card like Paradox Haze can be huge for this ring. It's an ore that says Enchant Player at the beginning of Enchanted Player's first upkeep each turn, that player gets an additional upkeep step after this step. 
So basically, instead of getting one upkeep, we get two. And because of that, we get two upkeep triggers with our replicating ring. A much more recent card though that can help us out as well is Sphinx of the Second Sun from Commander Legends. It has at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you get an additional beginning phase after this phase. And the beginning phase includes the untap, upkeep, and draw steps. So obviously this helps out in multiple ways, but the one that the ring cares about is that upkeep. Now obviously this creature costs 8 mana in total, so it might not be the most efficient way to really speed up your ring, but you never know. Maybe you've got a way to cheat it into play or something? I don't know. But let's move on to some other ways that can definitely help us out though by talking about ways to get additional counters. And the first one that I want to highlight is one that is typically used to combo with a lot of Planeswalkers with Deep Glow Skate. When it enters the battlefield, you double the number of each kind of counter on any number of target permanents. So players typically use this to get an ultimate of a Planeswalker really quickly. But with our Replicating Ring, once we've got those four counters, this can get us the rest of the way there. Or if we've got less counters on the ring, we can just blink this a couple times to get us there quicker. But we've got other cards too that can help us out in a different way like Winding Constrictor. It says if one or more counters will be placed on an artifact or creature you control, that many of those counters plus one are placed on that permanent instead. So no matter how we get that counter, whether it's an upkeep trigger or if we proliferate it, we're getting an extra one. This can really speed things up, especially since we can play it on turn two. And of course, if you've got $50 to just throw around, Doubling Season is a card you should consider. It has if in effect we put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. So yeah, really expensive, but really effective. Now, although you can unlock this achievement with any commander, there are some commanders that definitely lend themselves more to helping you out. The first that comes to mind is Atraxa. Atraxa has at the beginning of your end step, Proliferate. An Atraxa deck built around proliferation can get you there in no time. One commander that might be able to give her a run for her money though is Rolesk Apex Hybrid. It has when it dies, Proliferate, then Proliferate again. Now you might be thinking it's gonna be hard, you know, for Rolesk to die, and then you have to get Rolesk back, then you recast, but clones, just use clones. You make a copy of this, and thanks to the legend rule, it dies, and then you get that trigger. So every clone you make proliferates twice. Another commander that can proliferate, though it's not typically built around that function, is Yogmoth Ran Physician. Yogmoth does a lot of powerful things, but the one thing that matters here is black black discard a card proliferate. So Yogmoth can definitely get you there as well. Another option might be Pier and Toothy, well, more so the Pier part. I mean, you get both of them, but Pier is the one that matters here. It says if one or more counters will be put on a permanent your team controls, that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters are put on that permanent instead. So somewhat like a winding constrictor, but in the command zone. And actually, before I bring up this next one, I just want to say spoiler warning because this is yet another Kaldheim spoiler, but if you're already watching this episode that includes a spoiler, I assume you're okay with the spoilers, so here we go. So the next one I want to bring up is Vordenklex Monstrous Raider. It says if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. So it kind of has that doubling season effect, but in your command zone. But ironically, if you're playing against Vorinclax, it's going to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to unlock this achievement. Because it also says if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead, rounded down. But regardless, the last one that I want to bring up is nowhere near as mean with Vorel the Hulkblade. It has pay green and a blue and tap it double the number of each kind of counter on target artifact, creature, or land. So obviously being able to double up your knight counters can be incredibly helpful. So best of luck replicating your ring as quickly and as many times as possible. I'm sure there's someone out there that can figure out how to replicate this as early as turn 3 or even earlier. So if you think you know the fastest way, let me know in the comments below. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.